Drevers, it was called Drevers. You know, everybody, not everybody, but from what I can gather, most people, relatives, were uh, musicians and artists oh, wow. and, and pipe makers. And when they came wow. to New York, they were all had bands, regional bands. But I never thought on my grandmother and grandfather's side, turns out on my grandmother's side, I, I didn't think they were musicians. He was this guy called, their name was, um, uh, uh, oh boy, Lisiak. So he changed the name to Jack List, and he was a Lee, famous oh, guy. Oh, Oh, yeah. Like, but yeah, Lisiak. That's that's actually Slovenian yeah, last Lis name. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So it turned that he changed his name to Jack List, but he played with Red Norvo. Really. And all these guys. So. Wow. There was a, a musical thing a connection on that side, which I never thought jazz. Jazz player from you know you could swallow, you know that area. You know, so. Yeah, well, wow, that's quite beautiful. quite interesting. Did, yeah. did he get you interested <laughs> into jazz or into music or how, how did you get actually interested into? No, no, he was already gone. He, I guess he had you know they say I don't know what was going on. He was pretty tumultuous life, I guess. But I know he ended up he might have ended up in South America. Never never heard oh, wow. from him again. Or it yeah. maybe it was a, institutionist i don't know there were different yeah, varied sure. stories i'd love to look it up no he was already out of the pig i was i was a youngster or not even around at the time mm -hmm. okay but it's interesting you know interesting. yeah sure it's always to, to hear these stories you know it's like you know every, everyone I, I, I i've spoken to joe la barbara you know the drummer and you know his family oh is like, yeah joe from sicily and they moved like you know it's all these amazing stories and you're like man that's bizarre you know quite interesting to hear well, we were there when i was with when i was with Mo, paul motion you know and joe joe and i were joe Lovano, you know and yeah. we were in sicily and and uh he met with his relatives i mean about i don't know 50 people came to the hotel and scooted him off i think we either had a night off or no he they took him early and, and and it was great because he said they didn't know any English and he he didn't hardly know any Italian. Yes, sir. But they, they had a great time. They were laughing and drinking and eating. Yeah. The rest yeah. is history. So it's it's great. You it's know, amazing. Go back. Yeah, Joe LaBarbera is beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, family. such such I mean, a, what a family. Also, yeah. With the family and, he comes yeah. from, right? Or every, you know. Yeah. Incredible. And it's other it, uh, his other brother, uh, the, the writer, uh, Spacing. Yeah. Uh, Trumpet, uh, yeah. Uh, John. Spacing. John. Sorry, John. I think it's John. I think it's John. Uh, but John. But, John. But, yeah. John. Sorry. But uh, yeah. I wanted to ask you about, like, uh, you grew up in Long Island, right? You were born there. Uh, I mean. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, if, if we talk about, like, early 60s and the jazz, you know, that's that's for me. If I look at take a look at my you know record collection, it's of course everything. But some of my favorite records are like starting late fifties or okay, okay, shit. Rephrasing, <laughs> it includes everything. But you know, amazing music was made like from late fifties to late sixties when you were like starting to, to become a teenager as well. And do you have some like recollections from that time, like seeing some of those artists live? Like were, were you already like stepping into the sea of jazz or? Well, that's funny because you, I mean, it sounds like you have a little insight. You, you were foreseeing what, not foreseeing, but looking back and seeing what might have been. And you're, it is interesting because even on Long Island, you know, the proximity to New York was great, but I was a kid. We, we went in, but I didn't, it was only till I was 15 or 16 did I go into Manhattan, you know, mm. start to venture and go to Slugs and Vanguard. Yeah. But, but on Long Island, oddly enough, you know it's about an hour i just drove back last night uh you know it's like it could be less than an hour you know yeah. and uh but they brought a lot of artists out here there was a jazz uh 
Creative Music Society that was pretty strong. You know, people really yeah. committed themselves to it. It wasn't, and and uh, you know, I, I used to go see. Well, I, I remember uh, recollections are very clear of seeing Cannonball with his group. And wow. I, always, I told the story on another one other occasion that I had recalled it. That's why I remember it now. And at the end of the concert, you know, it's Joe Zal and all, and then yeah, uh, the, the whole crew, row, yeah. you know. Louis Hayes and they over. they were marching down the street. They were marching down the street with singers, and it was like, and playing. I don't know what they were playing. Maybe if they broke it down. Maybe he had a snare drum. I forget. But it was great. Yeah. It's almost like a like a New Orleans funeral or something. You know, joyous but you know moving. You know. Yeah. So I remember that. I I used to see Rasan Roland Kirk. Wow. You know, like right there, and it was you know, deep, it was like, wow, right, you know, in this little, little place, I don't remember where, not that far from where I lived. Yeah. Later on, I saw, I was lucky enough to see Monk. Wow, really? One, wow. one time I saw Monk play with his band, he was wow. like two hours late, you know, and it was great, you know. Yeah. Sure. Fat Jones, Mel Lewis band came out a lot. Hmm. Uh, uh yeah it was really great and, and i well, i'll tell this if you don't mind i'll tell a little quick story you know oh please please yeah was, i mean that uh, that's why we're talking i love this you know yeah no it was great it, it was, sure. there was this little club i think it was called pelicans it was about 40 minutes from where we live east and for some reason my, my dad was so supportive my mom and everybody you know and, and uh we went out there for some reason i brought my horn and i used to sit in with this Band, like a little trio, you know, it wasn't like a hard hitting jazz thing, which was good, you know, but it was tunes I knew and I'd play and they, yeah. and they didn't pay me, but it was great experience, you know, and uh, after weeks and weeks, the, the club owners say, hey, you know, next Saturday, we're having a uh, New York guys come in and I, I'd like you to sit in with them. And, and was, yeah, I'll be there, you know, and I was mostly still like I, my soprano was really yeah. i love playing soprano as i still today but, but i saw i go and it's it's um jerome richardson it's eddie gomez i think wow. billy cobham wow. okay uh, uh, but who, who did i say uh, yeah eddie, uh jerome uh who did i leave out somebody but whatever was that probably you know, bass yeah no eddie was bass, yeah. me up yeah Eddie was playing bass, you know, who I yeah, ended yeah. up playing with later, you know. Yeah. I never yeah. really told, and Roland Hanna, Roland Hanna. Roland Hanna, okay, yeah. So, so here I am, you know, I said, if they like you, they'll ask you to play two tunes. And I go up and I what do you want to play, kid? You know, but they were so sweet. I said, <laughs> uh, well, yeah. anything, you know, I figured I'll just, if I don't know it, I'll hear, you know. Yeah. Like, like how foolish was that, you know, it's like <laughs> knowing, <laughs> I didn't know it, you know. It was okay, but I, you know, looking back, it's like, jeez. <laughs> and I went up and they asked me to play two tunes, you know, and it was it was such a good, I told my bro, we called because he was at uh, going to uh, Potsdam University at the time. I said, oh, man, that's the first time he cursed over the phone. Holy shit, what? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there was there were scenes like that. Yeah. Just, and you know where I grew up, and and they used to just go sit in, and, and everything was always relaxed, and and like a lot of cities, you know, touring yeah. when we used to be with big bands, go, and, you know, travel. What well, was Woody's band or Hamp or something? Yeah. You know, we we yeah. get in the town and meet. You know, what's what's happening? Go sit in at the club. You know, uh, in Pittsburgh, go sit in with whatever, you know, yeah, with people. You know, so it was really, uh, yeah, there was a scene. And I used to see, I remember being at a Clark Terry concert and, and I remember him, uh, announcing the death of, uh, Coltrane that night. He mm, said, we just oh, lost shit, one man. of the here. And at that time I knew some teachers who were going over Train's house. Cause he lives, I don't know about, again, everything's 40 minutes from where I live. <laughs> Anything. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> But uh, I remember once he said, maybe sometime I could take you over there. I remember, you know, just casually mentioning. My teacher never wanted, but it's just uh, people he knew, you know, had, yeah. had gone over and, and hung with him. And, uh, you know, 
who I've since went over to that house years ago because they were restoring it, you know, and, and making it a, uh, you know, a site, like a, a, yeah, like a memorial, museum. Yeah, of, yeah. Memorial, yeah, yeah. So, but it was, it was great. So, yeah, I, I and, and there were a couple, there was one guy in the neighborhood who was, he, he, it's funny because I lived in the city and Boston and the city for many years in, in yeah. right Manhattan. And uh, I kind of back to the, where I grew up, you know, for many years, since I had uh, two daughters, you know, so, but there was a guy who lived around the corner. He was very, his dad owned the music store and mm. uh, he was, he was in the train and, and, and that and my brother and then the scene. So, you know, and they had, they had big band gigs once I was a little older, 15, 16, you know, yeah. playing with Gene Krupa, playing with, wow. you know, uh, all these, all these people, you know, like, uh, I try to think of names, but you yeah. know, you have the, cause they had trust fund gigs at the time and, and they were great gigs, you know, you, yeah. you travel around and, and work, you know, yeah. I mean, I was doing, you know, five gigs a week sometimes when you were still a teenager, like in this place. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Amazing already. But when did you decide, like you mentioned Boston? Well, when did you decide then right. to go to Boston, to Berkeley? How, how did that decision happen? I mean, like, just. Well, I really couldn't get into my, any other schools, probably. <laughs> no, no. But I mean, I tried... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it was like a couple, you know, you don't, it's like going through with my daughters, you know, you don't, you, you know, it's, uh, we were talking about it last night while I was with one of them and, and just, you know, you don't, it's all a new thing and you, you hopefully make a good move and whatever you make, you make the best out of it. Yeah, you meet sure. friends and you meet, but, um, I tried to get a couple other schools and the, and the SATs, those tests, you know, my things were not like pots. They, I don't think they were quite maybe high enough, well, you know, but it was great to do with the auditions. I learned piano pieces yeah. by oh, memory yeah. and I never played. You know. So it was great. And then I said, well, Berkeley, you know, and they were like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it turned out really great. I mean, it was just, you know, going to schools. I figured out that from teaching now too, it's it's the main thing is you, you you're around people. You I meet, have meet people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you meet people. There's a place to play. You meet people. You bring people in, and it's and it's beyond networking. It's just a place to do it and meet. You know, I had yeah. a discussion a couple of years ago with a really fine pianist in New York, and and he said he taught him. He said, ah, school, you know, and I said, yeah, great. I think you could do that. You, you know, why not spend the bread, less bread, and get teachers, get, get this composition teacher, get this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Piano, get, get what your main instrument is. And, and, uh, but you, you know, you still have to get out there. You know, I, I see some people that don't, you know, if you're not, uh, if, if, if you're not engaged with people, you know, yeah. even if you have to go out and take a gig on the road, you know, with, Maybe something that's not, you know, your ideal gig at the time. But you go yeah. out. You have you're playing. You're, you're you're making a living. Yeah. You're making music. You know. I was thinking about it last night. I was getting it was about two in the morning. I was thinking uh, of us doing this. I, I I I thought whatever it is, you know, all the all the gigs. I mean, I remember playing with the the Miller Band. You know, Glenn Miller Band. Yeah. It was a, a New Year's Eve gig. You know, and. It's not look. It's not music that I want to go play. But sure. what a great experience, boy, clarinet sure. and 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 who was on the gig? Mel Lewis was on the gig, playing drums, and you know, and a great bass. But I forget who it was, but it felt great. Yeah, you know, yeah. and it's a learning thing. You do a club date. You know, you you, yeah, sure. I mean, I've been on like a year when I I used to do those as a kid too. You know, five or six I mean, big band gigs or small group, and then then. Then do club dates on the weekend. I think I was yeah. working more then. <laughs> what went wrong, bread. right? <laughs> and not bad bread, considering it hasn't gone up that much. <laughs> you know? So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just reminiscing and and but all those experiences, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. they all matter, and you and you, and you take them, you take them all serious and try to learn, you know, because yeah. Uh, from it. and you really do you really do definitely but uh, yeah. you, you you mentioned like <laughs> kind of networking in boston right like the who, who are the, the i mean i, I you know uh, you're kind of the same i mean i'll ask you later about new york but like 
all these saxophone players that emerged later in the 70s, including you. I mean, you know, I've, I've spoken to Bob Mincer and Jerry Gorgonzi and uh, I'm probably missing out some amazing players from this. Dave Liebman, you know, everyone from the 70s scene, including you. And I sense this amazing camaraderie between all of you guys, like with the loft scene and everything. But speaking of Boston, who were the Boston mute? I mean, what connections did you make there in the, that kind of held? Well, I mean, of course, uh, you know, yes, yeah, people like still friendships and musical uh, connections that were, that are still alive today. You know, oh, wow. uh, well, of course, you know, Joe Lovano, you know, we oh, you were, met Joe there already. Came, wow. Okay. Told me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so wow. he would, you know, people would, we had a thing We did a recording with Joe and, and, uh, it was a trio fascination, I think. One yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that one. Yeah. And one of the tunes he didn't use was called 90 Wyndham Street. I think he was yeah. playing bass clarinet. Yeah. And he did, but he didn't put that on there on the record. But it was called, he, he dedicated it to 90 Wyndham Street. And it was this, it was my third year there. You know, I was, I found this place that was, I mean, it was incredible. It became the mecca, like, of the loft scene. It was the only really scene like this. It was in a... In Boston. In, in Alston. Oh, okay. In, in Alston, right outside of Boston. Oh, right right off of Star Drive. It was, a, it was a trucking place. So they stored trucks there, and they, and they had an <laughs> office. I remember the guy's name. John uh, Madden is, was his name. And I went in, and he said, You guys play music? You're going to have a ball. And we, we went up... Originally, it was this office building, but they we made them into it was this huge room that we had our music room in, yeah. and I had we had everything up there, and and I remember Ierto actually rehearsed there for a week. Oh wow! In, in the space, but but we would have on most days we'd have three. You know, we moved in. There was a jacuzzi in the up. It didn't work for too long, but a huge. You could fit about forty people in there. You know. And and we had access to the roof, you know. Yeah. So it was really oh. incredible, and, and and we would and on most days we'd have three sessions. Wow. You know, the early session, maybe at three thirty-four, then the evening, and then the late night. Yeah. Wow. And uh, <laughs> man. And you know, like Joe would come by. I remember uh, John Schofield was another person that. Really? How oh, wow. You know, we we were we were. You know, we, we were there together and, and we're fortunate enough to play with him a little, you know, here from time to time. Yeah. I, I remember because, you know, I've also played drums and I remember. I really, I like Joe, I basically, still right? Had, really had, yeah, yeah. Well, we would play duets. Look I really. TV, we'd play a train, Ascension, and then play yeah. for another hour and then listen. And, oh, that's beautiful. And I remember Schofield came up one night and there was no drummer. And I said, you got it, you know, and I remember, you know. <laughs> but and again again i'm sure what i did wasn't great but you you boy when you're thrown into the fire even though it was just a session you know we're playing and john was already you know played so beautiful you know yeah but you know it, it was a heavy learning experience so this kind of thing happened all the time people were always up you know that's beautiful yeah. i remember you know it just yeah it was it was beautiful so that was this you know and, and then of course kenny warner who i yeah, you know, cherish cherishes um, friendship and musical yeah. association with you know just incredible. He he would he would always not always be there, but he would be you know come up and play and and, and then uh, Chip Jackson was around. Oh yeah, uh, John Abercrombie was a little before who I ended up yeah. playing with a bunch. Yeah, of, like, yeah, just watch this. He was up there one, three, the, the quartet, like I think it's with uh, Drew and uh, Joey, like you, you guys. Did. Oh, you, is there something out there? Is there something yeah. there? Yeah, it's like on YouTube. I guess someone uh, Montreal or some jazz festival put it, and I watched oh, it. Yeah, and man, we played. <laughs> man, it's very, I'm such a such a fan of uh, Abercrombie. You know, he's like for me, up there, one of the best ever composers and players. And oh, you you well, you know, you go John, like this. You cut out. I couldn't hear you. No, I, I'm saying you, you guys, when you play, you're just like, you know, going like this. It's so beautiful to, to hear that and see that. So. Oh, I miss. I was so, I was so glad. Well, he and I went on to, uh, 
to do with somewhere in Canada to do this week clinic after that. So oh, just oh. he and I went. Oh, really? And it was really great. I, I really miss it because, I mean, I think one of the first times we, we knew each other and he was always just like, man, John is so nice to me, you know. And he didn't, I didn't think he ever knew who I was, you know. And I was kind of unseen, but not. He was always so beautiful. And then, yeah. and then I remember I had a gig at Visioni's. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I called John to play. And I sequenced everything, which was with Jeff Williams and, and uh, oh, boy, I forget. Maybe Jay Anderson. Oh, okay. And we did a couple nights. And, and I sequenced stuff. And, and he was so beautiful. And, and I ended up doing that. I played a week at the Fat Tuesdays with him years later. And oh, really? I, Oh. He said, bring your synthesizer. And I, I you know, I, I, he was, but his tunes, I must say, his yeah. tunes were just, you know, it's a lesson in, in uh, compact yeah. thinking. Or just, you know, yeah. uh, these short little tunes, not always, he could write along, but these short tunes that were just so lyrical, you'd play them and then you'd be able to improvise. It was yeah. like a jazz tune, but so free you know it's like yeah. a lesson to me you know you, you sometimes you write that's so intricate that there's nothing there's nothing left yeah for the He's for the left so much to, space right yeah just but he would write these tunes that were just like you'd played them all your life you yeah know? yeah it, it was it, funny you know it's funny just i guess because they're you know melodic lyrical but then and, and, and the harmonic movement was always so yeah, logical, a lot of, just natural logic. You know. It's like you know Ralph's piano waltz. You cut out, you cut out. Uh, oh, you yeah, know yeah, Ralph's yeah, piano yeah. waltz. It's just like yeah. The, right. the first time I transcribed it, I was like, man, it's so natural. Like you know all those Lydian chords and stuff. It's like man, so beautiful, so logical. Like like what you said, you know. So you wrote a short. Yeah. When we did an end of concert at this at this camp we were at and uh we did a concert he and the, a bunch of teachers that were there mm -hmm. and, and he he brought this little tune i i, I think he recorded with mark copeland you know? mm -hmm. and it was the shortest little tune which which i've experienced myself a little i maybe it was six bars you know yeah but but it had a it cycled beautiful you know <laughs> It wasn't yeah. like I had to start up again. It's just one thought, like so. Yeah. I'm glad I got to express that with you, just because his his beauty and his playing and his spirit and his uh, compositional. Yeah, so it's such uh, a player, man. I mean, yeah. Prowess, you know. Yeah. 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 It's it's really great. You, you were surrounded through your career. I mean, I will touch these guys later, like Bill Frizzell and Paul Motion, both uh, compositional speaking masters of, like you know six notes and that's it i mean you know like it's so beautiful to, to hear that so well i mean yeah paul's what well, we're talking about yeah paul's thing was special. i don't think he was a master of harmony necessarily but Malibu, he had a vision of the yeah. you know i always tell students you know yeah well and and mood yeah know? mood yeah timber yeah, that, that was the thing the pieces had the pieces had a thing he'd let you do whatever you felt on it you know you know but but hopefully everybody was in concert, not of playing the same motion uh, to speak. Yeah, to. <laughs> yeah that's a good. Thing. But 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 find the thing. So his tunes always had an underlying yeah feeling. How am I going to approach this? I remember that yeah. tune we used to play, White Magic. It was like a punk tune. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. And I guess Bill might have helped. You know, Bill was, I mean, you know, what can we say? You know, Frizzell, I mean, just another, for me, a guy that I played like Kenny Werner, a guy just master of yeah. harmony and where to, how to use it. Not, not yeah. to say this yeah. is, you get people go, well, if you don't want to use this chord, use this, 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 this. But it was more organic way of thinking, mm -hmm. folks here. I just, and always make your notes sound special, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's what I felt, you know. No, definitely. <laughs> no, that for me also as a listener, you know, it's yeah, it's just incredible. Just you know, the vibe, the whole atmosphere surrounding the compositions. You know, it's like a, you enter like in a, their own little universe, and it's 
Yeah, it's well, like, I mean, it's a, so that's a, it's another thing to take. I always say, you know, in our, in our journey here, life's and musical journeys, artistic journey, is to, you know, observe things and make just mental notes. Not, not yeah. that you have to consciously write them down, but just yeah, of, of what makes things percolate and 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 yeah. gel like they do, you know, and and, and blossom into. Yeah. Beautiful composition. You could take one. You could take a little thing and work it. You know, it's, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> no, it's true. It's like the, the older you get. I mean, I, I see that with myself. You know, when I was twenty-three, I would write like you know tunes, changing uh, meter every bar and having the most difficult, whatever, augmented, fucked up changes, sorry for the language, but you know, <laughs> like, like, yeah, man, we're, sh and then it's like, well, yeah, okay, but now, uh, you know, I just write a song, a tune, like, starting with G major, and like, making four notes over it, and it's like, man, it's way more now, for, at this stage, beautiful than that would be, I mean, you know, it makes more sense, I don't know. Well, in the hands of whoever you yeah, no, and and then given in the hands of what it could be a duet, it could be an yeah, orchestral yeah. piece, but in yeah. the hands of all of a sudden that thing can take shape. You know, it's got some breath, it's got some space to. You yeah. Know. yeah. I mean, that's a whole thing. Since we talk when we first talk, you know, it's talking about composition or how you think about things, and and uh, yeah, it's just one note to the next and making making music. You know? Yeah. Yeah. How do you approach composition, by the way, since you mentioned it? I mean, you know, well, I, I, I listened to the Under One Sun and, you know, you have so many influences coming, like also Indian and, you know, all these different folk elements combined with Coltrane and you and your spirit. And But how, how do you write a tune? Like, when did that start for you, actually? How did you start writing music? Well, I mean, it's funny, you know, where I, I look... I, I went back because we had, <laughs> I needed some tax information for some tax information, you know, and, and, you know, looking back, I was trying to find stuff from the eighties, you know, Whoa. that we took out a loan for something, you know, just trying to, for something we had to do with our account. You know? And, uh, I came across my stuff from Berkeley, you know, Wow. and it was like foreign, you know, all the, I saw these, I opened up this one part. And I thought it was all thrown out. I thought my mom had when was at her house had thrown everything out. But I found her Pomeroy's line writing notes, which I found this these swirling figures. I said, "What?" Finally figured it pretty quick that it was a conducting class. Oh wow! You know, and so what it made me think was, "Wow, let me let me think." the students I have now that I teach at NYU yeah. you know, so, and, and, and what it, you know, maybe the thing at the moment is not that important, you know, and, and maybe they don't care about this. And, and it made me think about what did I lose? Did I not take this stuff seriously enough? Uh, this arranging class, I still want to do it my way. You know, yeah, at some point I think I abandoned that because I said, well, I'm not really hearing it. Mm. So let me approach it. Let me approach what I hear. Let me be honest. It's mm. like playing golf. Let me try to get be a better golf tennis player. You know. Yeah. Let me try to do it myself and learn my own way and and be honest about it. So, but but it made me think. That's the only reason I'm mentioning that. It made me think, and then I then I was interested. You know, different techniques for arranging. And if you were more like a uh, doing arranger and you, you had time period, you you almost need these things because. Yeah. It's quick. I'll do drop two. I'll do drop three. You know, and, and it kind of helps, you know. But I, I did. But it made me think about teaching. Made me think about the creative process a little bit, you know. Yeah. And uh, so now I teach a lot, a lot of the compositional stuff now because I have thousands of compositions. I just have, you know, just in folders like all over the house. So, wow. but you know, when I teach now, I just did for for a student, he said, I, I'd like to, because we do different things, you know, all kinds of projects, like, you know, and I always do them. So it ends up, and I like it because they're quick, you know, so I, <laughs> he wanted to write a, you know, we do a thing called a lyric piece. You take a poem and mm. I have them write 
on this poem or, or any kind of phrase from literature or any kind of thing, but not usually not your own, you know, some other text. Yeah. You know. So we did that. He said, I want to write, see if I can write my own lyrics. And, and, and I had spoken to this really incredible vocal. Uh, he's my wife's connected to the ensemble out here in Long Island, David Freiling, doctor. He, teach, he teaches at Hofstra University. And I asked him, I said, David, this is like a year ago. I said, you know, the, the writers usually, composers usually write their own text, you know, ever. And he said, it's, he said, it's very rare. Either right, one right. is good or the other. But we forged ahead anyway. So I got home and we went to the, the water because the water's in. I was looking at a bridge. I came home and wrote some text, you know, and I, took me about half an hour and then I took me a half and I wrote this tune you know just just quick yeah and I love it because there's no pressure I'm just doing the assignment you know yeah. and it yeah. turns out it turns it's a funny thing because it turns out a lot of times I like I don't even want to like it you know it's like no that was just an exercise you know but it turns out just from doing it not thinking about it you know yeah yeah takes uh, off the pressure that's also important I guess yeah, it's funny, but th that experience. So, I mean, your question: What do I? How do I think about it? Well, I mean, just the melodic thing is really important. And yeah. under one sun was oddly enough with a couple some new pieces, but pieces that were longer pieces that were a little different concept than what we're talking about. Like yeah, pop, pop, yeah, pop, yeah. Pop, 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 Let's that's it. That's a piece, you know. Yeah. But they were longer compositions and and less. I didn't hear myself blowing over them like long extended periods. I just, to me, to me, I'm trying, it's, um, I've always been, because people always say, man, you got to do more records, you know, do more of your music. And, you know, if I get a gig or I get a con some kind of concert, I write a whole new set of music, you know, mm. even, a, even a little restaurant. I remember doing a restaurant gig with Dave Berkman, you know. Oh, yeah. And I, I, there were two two sets, and and we had never played. You know, Dave played, but I think it was Mike Serene, and and uh, the bass player whose gig it was out here. You know, and uh, for the second set, I wrote a whole an hour's worth of music. Wow! <laughs> just, wow! Just for this little gig, and I said, when you get done with it, just throw it on the ground. You know, and, and I think I just threw it away like Picasso did, except his his is much heavier. And when he burnt his things after the video I did but um yeah it's uh i don't know we, we I, I lost my train of you know thinking about no, but, my but train of you started you know. writing like already in the 70s let's say like your own music or like well well going back to that you know i okay so tying in with berkeley you know i wrote a couple things and I, but it, it all started like uh, kenny warner had this uh, house in Brooklyn for years and we used to go play you know we had this band Abla Du I don't know if you uh, no. it was a band that we did yeah we did it in the uh, late 70s hmm. going into the 80s and and it was really uh, Kenny at the time was the primary writer I, I you know I heard nobody wrote anything uh, bass player Scott Lee ended up writing I think one tune I wrote one, we we recorded something, but it never came out, but it was, ah, yeah. that band was, it was really fabulous. Cause we, we get together sometimes two, three times a week. And it was the closest thing to ever like Hermeto's whole thing in Brazil, you know, yeah. where they get together every day, but this was the closest thing, you know, and Kenny was right. You know, some of the tunes were, really extended and, and Kenny, playing over yeah. long forms yeah. and it took me almost till the last gig that we did i remember finally nailing this tune and going, i got i finally got got this thing now and because it was you know beautiful tune yeah. but i remember one day they went out he had this building and they went out to eat i said yeah i'm gonna hang and i they were gone and they wrote this ballad hmm. and they said man you you gotta you gotta write more you know and, and and that's something I take. I try to encourage my students to, not to get back to talking about students, but no, no, that no. correlation now is important. Yeah. And I uh, I try to encourage people to write. You know, just because yeah. you make a call for a gig, and you know, 
what are you going to play a standard? Maybe one, but yeah. they, they, you know, you got to present your music. So after that, I started to write. Then I wrote this tune for that we used to play, and then one on. I did a piece. It was early on composing. You know, I don't know, well, good or bad. We don't know. We're not going to judge it. But but it got me going on uh, Bridge Street. We, there was a record. I don't know if you're familiar with. No, that. I forget the number. Yeah, it was a record that Kenny did with. The great Bill Durango. Did you know Bill Durango? No. Oh, you don't know Bill Durango? I mean, by name, yeah, but no. Yeah, but, yeah, but he's he passed now, maybe eight years now. He mm. used to play with Bird, and and he played in Cleveland. He had a trio with Skip Haddon. Uh huh. Just by name, I know. I have to check it out. Okay. Oh yeah, he was. He wasn't one of these. Let's quote. He used to play with Ben Webster, but he man, he was way oh, ahead well. of his time. You know, I think one might have won the blue uh, something in Downbeat or something was featured oh. once. You know, oh. but he was a real spirit. He was in, in all the people from Cleveland, and I was kind of attached to that. From from Jamie had that, and, and oh, yeah. uh, who you know was another serious companion in, in our life and, and yeah. uh musical experience growth you know but uh so they all people always thought i was from cleveland because we used to do a lot of gigs there you know <laughs> and um but bill was so so bill was on that record too uh bridge street 91 bridge street i forget mm, it's a yellow check it out. okay i recently found actually the hard hard it was you know final i found the vinyl on it oh know? wow that's and rare. uh so I wrote a tune for that, and 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 then it started to go. Then you know, one you need you need people in your yeah to push you to have bit. your back. Let's say yeah, and to and yeah. to make you feel like it's worthy because it's, I mean, life too, and make you feel like you're worthy of living. You know, like yeah, you know, you're actually a beautiful person. You're actually creative. You're yeah. actually what you know, it's important. Yeah. It's important to have that camaraderie. You know. Yeah. So yeah, but. And then just take it, you know, the melodic thing is, oh, oh, so I know what, so I'm, I'm, I said before, you know, people are always saying, do more, even more records, you have so much music, and I'm going, well, I, I'm, I want to write another piece, you know, <laughs> and I want to write it for new, some people I hadn't played with. And, but my thing is finding that, I, I've never really, uh, I'm, I'm looking to find that thing where, the improvisation is there. It could be 10 seconds of, of improvisation that's tied yeah. in with the music. The tying, the writing, and the improvisation Improv, together. It doesn't yeah. have to be improv that goes on for 20 minutes. I mean, that's, you know, or even, even two minutes or even 50 seconds. Maybe it could yeah. be 12 seconds. But hopefully you create some magic. And it's tied in with the composition because I love yeah. romanticism too. I love melody. I love... I still love playing with piano a lot, of, you know, just that depth of piano and guitar yeah. too. But yeah. and then quirky, quirky uh, configurations of mu musicians, cello and trumpet. Yeah, yeah. And, sure. You know, that's another thing that that, that already makes changes. Different, yeah. You know? yeah. But yeah. I think that romanticism with you know lyrical, you know, the whole you know we're affected by played so much Brazilian music. I was lucky lucky enough for years to be. And still ongoing collaborations with people like the Duca, Dave Franceca, and, and uh, yeah, I have moons. Uh, there's so many like people. Toninho Horta, I love that. Oh yeah, Toninho Horta. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the last time I saw him, we had lunch years ago, and he said, "Billy, we should do a band." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Wow," <laughs> you know. And we never did, but we never did because, you know, it was oh, he was a loose spirit, you know. Yeah. It was, I think the whole business thing, uh, he just didn't want to deal with, but he had enough yeah. people that really knew how heavy he is that yeah. wanted to help him. But I think, <laughs> cause we were supposed to go to Brazil a bunch of times and the day before that ah, it's canceled. You know? <laughs> but here's another guy. I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah. Such I mean, a player composer also. I mean, everything can. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was telling somebody I, you know, you, you know, you do gigs. He had a band that was, uh, we was, I think we played a week. At, it was Amazon. No, not Amazon. It was a new club that Miles opened 
It was in Midtown. Beautiful, huge club, but it didn't last long. I think we did the second or third week. Uh, Chinino and Danny Godlieb and Mark Egan and, oh, wow. and Gil Goldstein. Oh, wow, man. Because he liked that the te- he liked that relationship with Lyle Mays. You know, I think yeah. he really loved Lyle and and Pat. You know, and, and uh, so people that were had affiliations and uh, with them, he, he really took to. You know, yeah. And we had a great, beautiful gig. Infinite. We played Infinite Love. You know that tune. I think so, but, but Amor, I, I mean, it's I have like Amor. Amor, yeah, I have like three records of his, like one with Wayne Shorter and. Uh, oh wow! With Kirby oh, on it, I, I think. I think he has oh, like. Really? I think oh, there's. I... Yeah, what, yeah. I'll send you the link. I think it's. Oh okay. It's okay. Wayne. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I mean, he he's done so much. Uh, but people just don't know it. It's like it's so sad in a way that you know so so, so many musicians and. Uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Uh, Diamond Land, yeah, Diamond Land. Oh, right, but they're on that. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes you get in this new age, you get some music and you don't even know who's on it. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's a great, you know, he's a great composer. I mean, it just. Yeah. But, you know, we would do these gigs. We did a tour. I remember it was during the, uh, we were somewhere on the East Coast and a couple of the guys, it was a di- little different band. Uh, some guys from L.A., the great musicians. And uh, we were on the East Coast, and there was a uh, earthquake in, in mm. San Francisco or uh, L.A. I think I think it was San Francisco. Because we went there, I remember staying in a hotel, and it was like the ceiling was cracked. And, <laughs> but but so we were we would do another tour that we did in the states, and uh, but he would play solo. Yeah, uh, I mean it was like. It, it, it was just unbelievable, you know, just, and then I remember him sitting at the piano. It was a little club in Manhattan and he sat at the piano and same thing. I never heard piano sound like that. You know, yeah. I've never heard a guitar sound like that. Different vibe. Yeah. Completely. You yeah. know, just, and, but he would sit and play these voicings on piano and, and it sounded like he was playing every note on the piano, <laughs> but everything had was beautiful yeah. know, the way he voiced it. Yeah. So he has a special, very special thing and, and and there's different people i i i was also thinking of that like people who play solo like uh i was lucky enough to through the years play arabic music again mm-hmm. not, not master of none of these things like indian music lucky enough to have played with some of the heaviest people but just touching the surface of my expertise or knowledge of the, you know yeah but but getting getting the essence of it yeah you know? that's important and uh the Arabic is, is uh, Simone Shaheen. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah sure. It's fabulous. We yeah, we would be in Palestine or or oh, Israel, oh, I didn't and know that. he he played. He'd go. We'd do a band thing, and then he'd come and play solo on the oud. You know? Oud, yeah. And or violin, you know, just the solo thing is where you get, you know, just just beautiful, you know. Yes. Yeah. Great. Wow. Just go ahead. You got it. Yeah. It's like Art Blakey, you take it, you know. <laughs> you don't need me. <laughs> no. no, it's true. Yeah, you listen to these guys, it's just like, yeah, so beautiful. Yeah. What what they do. There's so much talent. I mean, out now, you know, the youth and, and this this whole thing is crazy, but I I see a lot of I if everybody could uh withstand all this what's happened this last prior year. You know, it's going to be uh, what well, well, we said in the beginning. It's like a uh, renaissance. Yeah. I mean, that's the only thing you could do is, uh, is either get dark or think it's going to be a renaissance. And I think in a way people have been working and thinking and ready to go, you know. I think so, too. So, yeah, I think so, too. So I'm ho- hoping a lot of young people who are just killing it, you know, just beautiful, artistic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, performers and creators get a Definitely. chance. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like the sun always shines after the rain. So. Yeah, yeah. Good hopefully, week. if it doesn't, yeah. that's it. So it's yeah. cool too. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. No, true. no, but, no, but B- Billy, I, I wanted to ask you, like, uh, just the, about the seventies. Also, you know, talking about the cre- creativity you mentioned, you now, like blooming and renaissance, and. Uh, how was it like for you? You know, we we mentioned Boston, but entering like this New York scene in the seventies, which was 
so full of amazing musicians. I mean, you know, when I check all the players who kind of you started there early mid 70s, it's just incredible. How was the feeling for you? Like when you, I mean, I know you're from Long Island, but then you went to Boston and but then returning to the New York scene. How was that like for you? Yeah, we moved, we were, we all moved down. We moved down. It was funny, you know, we had this place. I'll, I'll tie it in with 90 Wyndham Street, you know, we, and I'll tie it into Cleveland. We had gone, I think it was Steve Slagle who had also lived at, at 90 Wyndham Street for about a year. He oh, moved really? in, he was one of the last people to actually move in. Yeah, because people, several people changed. It was the basic thing. And, and, uh, and we went to Cleveland to play, I think, it was a club called the uh, the Dog. The uh, uh, I forget something. Uh, it's something Dog. I, I sure. shouldn't remember, it, but it's closed. <laughs> really big club, but you know, featured artists would go. I think, and we would open up, come down for very little bread, but open up, play the first set for yeah. Freddie or or oh. weather report. Or so, you know, and I forget who we opened. Maybe it was Freddie, and when we were driving back, Steve Slagle and I, and. and uh, Prior to leaving Boston, before we went to Cleveland, we had we were hanging out like all night on the roof playing, and going. and we got back. And we had been talking about going to New York, and we came back, and it was an eviction notice. You know, oh man, <laughs> the guy said, "Look, I like you guys, but you know, you just I got too many complaints, and and I'm gonna and uh, so here we go to New York. You know, a bunch of friends and I, you know, we we get an apartment and and. The, the the whole thing just seemed to work work out great because mm. uh, we lived down the street from the great Ronnie Cuba. Oh know, yeah, you know. the Barryton, yeah, he's amazing. And he player. would come over almost every day. We had a there was a Kanabi upright there, a really nice piano, and, and uh, he would come in the morning and hang a couple of hours almost every day. You know, if somebody wasn't busy, you know, and uh, so that was the introduction, and then he. He got me on to play with Eddie Paul Mary. Oh yeah, and and I got into the a short little stint with the heavy studio guys. It lasted about a year. Not every oh, really? day, but some really, you know, the heavyweights. Like yeah, Michael Brecker and Randy and all these guys. Well, it wasn't the, wasn't the jazz. They covered that. They didn't. I didn't. I didn't go play. Might have done something together, but it was you know more studio work, like yeah, actual studio work, which was great to get on the tail end of that because that kind of disappeared, and not totally, but and it's not exactly what I was wanted to be in New York for, but it was great, it was great. So, but the scene was it was beautiful. There wasn't um, you know clubs come and go and scenes and and. I wasn't really sitting in like I used to. It's just, but we had, we all, after the first year, we moved to a beautiful loft on 26th Street, mm. four of us, you know, and it was, you could throw, the first night you could throw a football as hard as you could throw it, you know. You know it was Man. a huge loft, and we had a little, like Dennis Irwin lived there for a while. Oh, wow. Steve Flagel and Keith O'Quinn, and, and uh, Joe would stay there occasionally if he didn't before. But then he ended up getting a pad on 23rd Street. So we had these two lofts right there, and then we would go downtown. Guy had a loft, you know, it was, and it was uh, Harvey Swartz had a, had a loft. Uh, yeah. Uh, Breckers, theirs were down. They might have already got, you know, it was all these pockets of that scene that still existed. And, yeah. And we were just playing all, to, you know, it was like we play, we were single. We play almost every day or write and, and then go out and where are we going tonight? You know, none of us really had that much bread. Yeah. You know? But the whole the whole economic thing was it was just easier. It too. was affordable. Let's face yeah. it. Yeah, sure. You know, because you did a gig for fifty, seventy five hundred dollars and it, it it went a long way. You know, it was like when you your parents said, Yeah, when a loaf of bread was a nickel and and, and yeah, inflation, but you know, it's 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 kind of not equal now. No, no, it's not. Yeah, it's it's just it it just got out of hand, and yeah. I I don't know how, you know, I don't know how people make it. You know, a, a young player, you know, young. Yeah. You know, hopefully you're married to somebody and you both making some bread and, and make it work. But 
but regardless of that, it was it was it was a great scene, and there were and there were places, and then later on, uh, you know, because a lot of us weren't, we were hitting, you know, there was a, I, I think in a the, there was a place called Bar Brews, and there was the uh, the late nights that you could go to places that were open all night, mm, uh, just yeah. forum, you know, so there were. Uh, I mean, it was a beautiful scene. And then, like, places like Vigioni's started yeah. to, so people want to kind of get it. You, you maybe you didn't get a gig at the, you weren't getting a gig at the Vanguard or the Blue Note, but you could play Vigioni's and play Four Night Street. You know, it was a great, oh, yeah. that was a great scene. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, I know. I know the name. Blues Club, down the street from uh, the Blue I, I have some bootlegs, I, I think, by John Abercrombie, actually, of. Uh, wow. His bands from Visiones, like I have to check. Uh, they're still. Well, he, that's where he cassettes. played. That's where he played. That's where he played with my music. And we oh, did really? One or two of his tunes. That, was, oh, that, that thing I was. That's the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's Visiones. Okay. Yeah. I remember playing there with Mitch Foreman and and. Uh, oh wow. He brought all his. Uh, all his gear. He had a roadie, and then and he said, "Bring your bring your synthesizer too. I want you know, you play." Some, we had so much gear that it blew the electric. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, the place went dark, and oddly enough, that day I I went out. I, I saw these glasses, you know, the coal mine glasses. That you put them on and they light up. Yeah. I I I bought them that day, and I, and I put them in my pocket. Just I figured I'm gonna need, and and I put them on. And I was walking through the club. People were like I had done this intentionally, you know. But that was a great scene, though. I, yeah. I, I, you know, that that was played a lot of gigs there. You know, uh, yeah. gigs that Tom Harold were on with Kenny oh. and and uh, and my wife. You know, we we had a band that we played weeks at a time. You know, that was really fun band, really beautiful band. We we almost hooked up with the record company. No, I, I but we, uh, they called and said, "Yeah, I heard this." About this band, can I? When can I come and see? I said, well, I think we did our last gig. You know, I don't have any gigs. You know. <laughs> and it just faded into oblivion, you know. Yeah. But, sure. uh, <laughs> but still. Yeah. So that you know, um, and then and then there were the established players, you know, that that were hitting in the clubs and yeah. uh, uh, like you know, you're you you're turning in line to do this. Yeah, but they yeah. weren't the kind of players. You know, there were young bass players. There were a couple that we knew that were making all the sessions. You know, and and I don't even a couple of them. I don't even know what happened to them. But mm. as far as the younger scene, you know. But now you think of bass players, even in the schools, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, I always think of bass players because it's such a big instrument. And, and, yeah. And but this now the in New York alone, the, the yeah. quantity of bass player. I mean, I'm sure. A lot of saxophone players too, you know, but saxophone—they were all, they always seemed like they were more saxophone. <laughs> not more, but but I know, I know, yeah, 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 yeah. Like I believe that it's not that. It's, it, you know, you got to be strong to play this instrument. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. don't think it's you got to you got to carry it around. You know, it's a heavy, you know, yeah. just whatever. You know, the yeah, yeah. And there's so many, you know, just in schools alone. Yeah, it's, it's amazing, yeah. If you think no, about it, really yeah. good, you know. So, but it was, it was a. Uh, of course, I can't recollect on every everything, you know, right at the moment. But, uh, but a lot of it was the loft scene, you know. That was yeah, uh, yeah. So strongly that created and I missed all these that. stories, yeah, yeah. And that's where getting back to the school thing. That's that's where if you have this opportunity to to come together and yeah. and, and there at least yeah. start the start that connection moving you know yeah yeah it's important you know yeah, well, well, but speaking of connection I, I, you know we, we talked about paul before and you know uh, psalm is for me one of my favorite records and uh wow and we talked about it and you know the composition and you going together with all with the entire band i mean it's just like the horns, you know, interloping and Bill, of course. And but how, how did your story with Paul begin? Actually, well, I mean, when did you guys well, hook up? Well, I think Joe had gone up, Lovano had gone up, uh, and maybe played. And I guess 
Paul said, you know, uh, you know, I guess he inquired, who would you like to play with, or you know, oh, yeah. okay. and Joe uh, uh, and Bill, I guess, might have recommended him to come up, and we went up to this house, and, mm, and wow. the rest is kind of history, and yeah. and, uh, and we play, and we end up rehearsing down in my house. I ended up moving downtown. I, I had a lot, not really a loft. It was a it was two and a half floors, and that's, yeah, it was yeah. a beautiful place. I had my grand piano, and so oh. we rehearsed there. And I remember when Psalm came out, we we had the vinyl, and I I had just gotten a new stereo, which I wasn't that good, but we put it on. It was like wow. I was yeah. saying, boy, that stereo is nice because it's just it's ECM sound also, right? I mean, it was you like know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was like whoa, it was like an orchestra, or something, you know. And I don't really listen. I go when I get something, I'm on, which. Uh, I have listed about 15 things on my, because my website was down, but it's, we didn't realize. So I have all these records. My, my daughter says, I have to put them on there for you. Listen. But, you know, I listen once and, and, and yeah. I try to get the whole, after I get it back, not right away, you know, and and, uh, and listen. And then I file it away. And then it's like Joe, you know, Lovano, he, he said, man, have you heard that the record we did, uh, uh, Caruso, the Caruso record, and I think there was one that Byron Olson did the arrangement. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you listen, yeah. Have you listened yeah. to that? Yeah. And I went and I played just a clarinet on the written stuff and uh, myself, but it was a and man, the orchestration. I went back and went, where were I? Should you know things I'm on? I really don't listen to you know, but I listened the first time to go. I hope yeah. I didn't really mess up too bad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And then and, and get the whole gist of the music, you sure. know. But then you go listen back, you know. It's it's amazing. You know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, you no, know, playing with Paul, that you know, it's, because like those other like a lot of people I was close to really really loved Keith Jarrett's band, you know, with, with yeah. Paul and and Dewey, and anything he anything he did really. Yeah, sure. That band to go see live and. And on records, it just you saw those guys live as well. Yeah, oh, we yeah. do. Oh man, beautiful. Yeah, got to we got with Paul too. We did a concert. Uh, Keith played solo. Never got to play with Keith yet, but he we opened up in a sense. We played before him at a concert in Mass, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. you know, Lennox, 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 I forget where, but and there's actually a tape of that. I just, oh wow! I, I think we well. Somebody taped on a cassette, but I don't know if it even exists. You know. But so that band, and then and and well, Keith, you know his whole thing. Can I can I call him that by a first name basis? Sorry, Keith. I hope that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he really really uh, was inspirational to uh, yeah. so many of us. Sure. Like many many people. I mean, of course, definitely. Coltrane and everything, but. Yeah, uh, so to play now with Paul, playing this real open setting, you know, yeah, yeah, it was just, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. as they say, a dream come true, you know, you don't yeah. think about it, and it's, all of a sudden you're doing it, and it's, wow, this feels beautiful, you know, yeah, can you be able to play and not think about it, just play, you know, so yeah. that's how it kind of came about, and, and uh, lasted a while, and then it changed up slightly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, 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 the trio also. And... Yeah, yeah, which was beautiful. You know? Oh, one of my favorites, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. it. With Paul, you also met Bill? Or no, already before? I, had, I, I forget the sequence. We had done a couple things. I forget the chronological mm. order, but we had played. Uh, Prior to that, I know we we did some recordings, maybe not even his, but we did a couple things. Mm. I don't think I had played with Bill's band yet, though. You know. Uh, yeah. I know you did that I, before we were born. Was like what nineteen eighty eight or 80s? Oh boy, you know better than I do. Yeah. No, but I think something like that. I mean, I have the records. Of it, but it's, I think it's like late. Well, I guess 80s. that. Yeah, and I, I, on that was the first record. Well, it was Julius Hempel, right? On that. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah, yeah, and he kind of took the lead. I w wasn't really improvising much on there. I think he might have played some tenor, and uh, and then things became more of an integral yeah. part of it later in the records. I mean, what a what a 
again, Bill, just to be honored to have been able to share that, his music or anything yeah. with him, you know. Yeah. Uh, I remember that we, it kind of happened that was a, was it Vigionis? It might have been Vision. Bill called me uh, to come in. They had been playing a couple nights, and he said, "Man, you want to come and play with us?" And, and I remember coming down. It felt so good, and that was the re, uh, resurgence again of something where we ended up doing mm. a lot more together. You know, yeah. he, he, we ended up doing the Knitting Factory, and I mean, that's another. Uh, anybody that was in his groups or in his circle, you know, just beautiful. And, and I have to mention Joey Barron. Yeah. I, I mean, again, another one of my favorites, you know, just what, it, I mean, what, a, you know, you, you, you talk about the, it's just so easy to play. I remember the uh, joy. I'm skipping yeah. around, but I'm just, no, please. Just I remember Joe it. Lovano had, had, had a gig at the knitting factory and basically all the improvisation was Joe, Luano, was, he kind of plays, but it was a mutual thing, and, and Joey Barron and myself. Oh, wow, man. And, we, and that was tapes. That I have that on, like, some kind of a big tape. I don't know. Oh, man, you have to somehow make this I, digital. Or... Yeah, I have to get I, I have to get that. By some yeah. uh, Japanese uh, taped it, uh, gentleman, mm. had a company or something. But, I mean... I remember at one point when Joey and I played a duet, drums and ah, man, I could yeah. just and for open music, we're talking open music, you know, it wasn't and he could orchestrate stuff too, you know, yeah. like Jamie yeah. had to, you know, really be orchestrate the music, you know. But I remember this part with, with Joey Barron, and I mean, I just almost stopped because, you know, sometimes you know, I, I think, you know, we talk about in the zone, you know. Yeah. Being in the zone, like a like a basketball player, so you're, I was in the zone. I saw the or baseball, but you know, playing music, you're in the zone. But I hate it when it feels. I don't hate it, but it feels so good that you stop and laugh. Yeah, yeah, no, it's me. <laughs> wow. I don't want this to stop, but I just curtailed it momentarily, which ah, uh, because this this is ridiculous. Why does it feel so good? I can just go wherever I, I go. Yeah. And then accompany each other. You yeah. Know? Yeah. So you remember these moments, you know, you remember these moments. And, and the most special times could be in a session when you were coming yeah. out. Could yeah. be at, it doesn't necessarily mean at a gig. I, I remember, you know, again, thinking about this. I remember when I was a kid, like, uh, going back to Long Island, I got, it was a couple that, he, this guy played like some kind of keyboard and, and this woman, young woman sang, and they were both really good. They, you get to play somebody that can comp for you. And, and I remember, and, and I had been playing so much that my lip was bleeding, not the inside, but the, and every time I took the mouthpiece off, it would rip the skin off. So there's blood all over. But I remember going home. I didn't Yeah. feeling, wow, I, I just, I went up a level. I went up a level in, yeah. in just confidence. And all of a sudden I just knew what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I knew what to do, you know, makes sense. Because yeah. I used to play that. I, I must mention my dad, and my brother too, coming up. You know, my brother's a great trumpet player. Oh, I didn't and, know. That. Uh, oh yeah, he was in, uh, you know, uh, Mel Lewis's band. For, oh, also, wow, okay. For many years, very, very good. You know, great. You know, studio musician. He could blow and and whatever, whatever. Yeah, just, yeah. So having him as a bride, I must <laughs> uh, was remiss in not mentioning that. And and my dad, who was. Uh, you know, did we play tunes with, you know, maybe not the greatest voices, but he would, he, he could, he could play a party and entertain a party. But, oh, wow. You know, That's beautiful. You know, yeah. yeah. All these. All, and so we got to play my brother and I, we, we grew up and, and my dad knew we was good friends with this really good a piano player in New York who I'm sure people didn't know, but he came, he would come over and he would play with a, he would. I don't think we played much together. We, we were really young, but just to hear him live, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm regressing to back when I was. That's a so kid important. Yeah. No, but that's important. And, yeah. And just to hear it, and here's a guy I always. You know, he had some issues too. You know, some mental issues, which. But I was always curious where what, what was this guy's life because he knew voicings and he knew he knew 
you, know, you could hear it. You could hear it. Yeah. I don't know exactly what it was at the time, but but it was beautiful, you know. So that that was having my brother and neighbor, and we would play at the time. Yeah, we would, there was a good, really good piano. My, uh, Mike Paul Antonio, who I, I, I haven't really seen, and he was lived in the next town. He occasionally we get to play with him, and so it was. You know, all these things matter. All, you know, definitely. Like, yeah. You can go back and go. This, this is how it should go down. But everybody's trip, everybody's journey in life and music is different. You know. Definitely. Yeah. And if we embrace it, and and, and uh, it's fabulous. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. But uh, can I ask you something, Billy? Like you mentioned, all these sessions, and uh, you know, you guys did gigs or. Did you ever play with Bill, like smaller uh, lineups, like trio or quartet or stuff like that? With Frizzell? Bill Frizzell. Yeah. Well, yeah, that when I said I went in, it was uh, when they, he asked me to come in and join him. I ended up playing the rest of the week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that, yeah, was, that, that, that was with small. Joey. Uh, that was with his trio. Which uh, It was with trio. I didn't know. With Kermit and Joey. That was with the ah, trio. OK. OK, then cool. I think we ended up, then I ended up playing on this land was after yeah that. yeah this land 92 yeah, or, yeah it was yeah. almost like they were going, i think joey said man call billy you know he's down okay the street. i didn't know that and yeah. and it, it really felt great and, and i think they said wow you know this is, and, and this land is one of my you know people ask me I mean, it's, yeah, it's beautiful yeah that's a combination going back to that i really feel a combination of written music and improvisation yeah yeah that's a really good example of, of his take on it i mean not take on it but his I don't know what you mean. Yeah, creation of it. You know, yeah. it's got improvisation, but it's so entwined with the music. There's this kind of feel, that kind of feel. Yeah. But the compositions don't get in the way. You know that too. I always uh, that's one I use for not because I'm on it, but I, I is rag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, and it's just, amazing, amazing. And it's got what four parts, and you, yeah. you. Amazing. That's part of the blowing form. You know, that's part of the blowing form. So it's not about chords it's about yeah, yeah. feelings it's yeah. about these four different things and attitudes going back to composition what do you think yeah. about composition it's yeah. all yeah i always say composition a melody has to have a home as we use that term a lot in my sort you know have a home to live uh, to exist if it's just yeah. out there you gotta have some underlying either underlying slight vague pulse or attitude uh mood you something know, and that yeah, that piece yeah. rag has these different yeah. moods yeah and it's so fun to play over and so yeah, i use yeah. you know i use that as here listen to this you know yeah oh it's beautiful yeah i mean i saw uh, saw the sextet you guys did like uh, with uh curtis folks and uh greg lees and uh ron miles Curtis folks yeah yeah, yeah like, like from uh, montreal and it's it's amazing you play yeah. like two amazing solos they're like just blowing it over and you just see the guys and everyone was like you know it seems like a unit you guys were like really you know it's this support among the musicians with that you sense as a listener you know it's, it's so beautiful well i mean there's again 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 bill as you know musician and as a person you know just yeah. as a band leader it's like yeah. joe too you know just, yeah you know no you know myself too i'd be off i'd be thinking ah what after the set you know uh what i could have played did you know maybe i'd re but they were always like, you know, Bill's just beautiful set, like Joe. Oh, that was a killing set. You know, I, just positivity, you know. Yeah, that's so And I'm sure thing. everybody goes home and thinks about it. But but at the time, at the moment, it's, um, yeah, it's really important yeah. to have that thing. So, and, and as a band, they always like split everything, you know, just, yeah. you, know, I'm, you know, just honest with every part of it, you know. Yeah, it's beautiful, yeah. You can I remember once that. he came, we had it with the Knitting Factory gig, and the gig paid really good, you know. And we were on the plane, and he hands me, like, more money. I go, Bill, there was more money. I go, what? How, how is that possible? I mean, the place was packed, but... Yeah. So I, I really respect that, too. That's a, that's to be a, a band leader at any point, to take care of people, the you know. Musicians, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, if, if you can, you know, just be, you know, look, sometimes you can't. That's a whole other thing, you know, the whole yeah. thing, taking care of people and the financial thing and with then the business. Yeah. Know, not that I want to get into that, but No, 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 but I know what you mean. It's yeah. 
part of being the band leader. But yeah. the, uh, Billy, can I ask you something else? Like, uh, uh, I'm doing this. Yeah, talk, please, please. Talk later with Steve Laspina, and uh, you know. Oh I'm, wow! I'm such a fan of his music, you know, because he's one of the. I guess people know him from Jim Hall, and but he's such an underrated, in my eyes, composer and band leader as well. And but I wanted to ask you. I, I think I have you on like two or three records with him. How did you guys meet? Because you seem to play. I think we did ten. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. How did your story with him begin? I think we maybe. T oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, no, no. Just, uh, just well, please. Yeah. No, no. I just wanted to ask you. How did you guys? Well, hook up? well I, I, you know, Steve again was when the first time I met him. He was just so beautiful, gentleman. You know, it was like, oh, Steve. You know, and like he knew my playing, and you, you know, you always wonder, but. And uh, we started doing these dates, and it's funny. So it came up recently. You know, we uh, we would get together, run the music, and he was it's his music kind of like John's. Abercrombie's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, had a simplicity to it. You know, yeah. but he's a fabulous, a very, definitely. I don't want to say underrated, but unknown. You know, he's yeah, a I would, fabulous yeah, definitely. bass player. You know, and I again, I don't judge confidence. We play him, and we would always try to take a different turn on them, you know? So, yeah. so, so again, getting back to the teaching thing, I, I, somehow it came up. I remember, um, uh, what's the monk? The, um, I can never remember the title. Ah, uh, sorry. You know the tune. Ah, oh, fuck yeah. I'm, I'm bad with that. sorry, man. <laughs> Not this is, uh, ah, you know, it's like titles, whatever. Uh, so I was, I was thinking. I remember being in the studio, and and I, of course I heard Monk play it, and, and but I never played the tune, and, and and I was trying to show students something, and I, again I don't use too much stuff I'm on, but I remember oh, uh, uh, this recording this tune, you know, and I remember being really free of these two fives because I didn't yeah. want to approach it like that, so. I used it and it kind of did what I, you know, I was, I, I kind of dug the, the way I approached it, you know. Uh, so it turns out that the whole thing, I had this, I don't do, I'm not a big computer guy, but I, I had the record, I had to download it on my computer. And, and you know how things all of a sudden they come up. And so like months later, this tune comes up and it's like this, it's a trio tune and it's like, Going, who is, is that? What tune is that? A Pat Metheny uh, uh, tune? And it turns out this one of the two, a trio tune they did on the, one of the, the same record uh, was a tune of Steve's, and it was with Vic Juris. Yeah, yeah, and, man. and uh, so Jeff cool. Hirschfield. Yeah. And I went, wow, man! I mean, it was really a gorgeous little tune that I I didn't get to play on because they did a trio. Well, you know, they usually did a trio tune. Yeah. So it got me thinking, wow, I got to go back and listen to his composition, speaking about him with his compositions, yeah. Yeah. you know, because this tune was like, and I, I love playing all of them, but, you know, you don't, again, I don't listen back to a lot of stuff, you know, listen back and call the, wow, thanks for being on that. What a great, you know, yeah. what a great experience that was, and, and it sounds great, and then I would follow it away. But, uh, yeah, it made me think of his composition. So I want to go back and listen to more. But he's a beautiful That's musician. He's got great. a big heart, really big heart. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, what you tune see... is that? I can't, uh, I see it. I can't, it's bugging me, you know. Uh, uh, wait, Let, let's see. You the... can ask him, you know. Yeah, I think I'll ask him. <laughs> it's... Yeah. The, the, the... Monk's Dream? No. No, it's no, not no. Monk's Dream. No. no. Shit, yeah, I'll check. I'll ask him. I mean, it's a famous tune, you know. I'm just, I feel like a fool, but, but, not, but sorry, not, monk. Not Panonica, right? No. No, not no. We used to play that with Paul. Really? Oh wow. Nah, shit. I, I'll, I'll yeah, ask. We used to play I'll ask the... Steve. I'll ask Steve. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you, I just, I just, it's evading me now. Yeah. But you, you have an incredible so, so connection. So what else? But, yeah. With bass players, you know, I was talking about Steve, also with Jay Anderson and Harvey Swartz and all these guys. You, you did so, so many beautiful records. So it's nice yeah, to see that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I thought about that. Bass players, why, 
Why because you mentioned the base before. Yeah, really yeah. Close. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a thing, or I, I, you know, it, it's great. It's yeah. Yeah, there was one record. We, I don't know if it's not on my website, but we did the last record we did with Jay uh, was uh, I, I, I call I always kid him Deepscape. Did you happen to hear that? No, with Jay. Yeah, that was the last record we did it at his house. Hmm. No, I don't have that, that one. Oh, I see now. Yeah. Oh, with Matt Wilson and. We got the tune. Ask me now. Ask me now. Ask me now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ask me now. Oh, we got that out of the way. You don't have to answer. That. <laughs> <laughs> not, not embarrassed or something. Now, now I can go on. Now I can think. <laughs> but um, where are we at? What were we talking about? Oh, no, Jay. Uh, yeah, Jay. That's, yeah. That's a beautiful record. Uh, I have to check it out. You, okay. Yeah, check that out. It's uh, cordless. And it's funny because uh, Frank Kimbrough yeah. is on. Yeah, and you know he passed, right? You yeah, know, sure. Yeah. I mean, what a, what a loss. Such a player. Yeah, true. When somebody called me, I was like, <sighs> yeah. Really, you know, wow. I mean, One. to lose all, a lot of people that we've lost recently. But yeah. Uh, but he plays like toy piano or something because he didn't, uh, Jay didn't, doesn't have a piano, you know. But Jay, yeah, that's another uh, one of those oh, guys. Yeah. He was on the gig with uh, Abercrombie. That's how our relation started. I think. Ah, really? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, you mentioned Jay, yeah, for Visiones. Yeah. The last thing we did, we did a little hit at NYU. It was like a, which is recorded. It's I don't know if I ever put it up. But it was with Paul McCandless. Really, with Paul? I played so much with Paul, man. Like you did. Oh, yeah, we we toured together so much. You played with Paul. I didn't know that. Oh. Well, we had a we. That was an interesting thing. We had a a group. Oh, is uh, I forget what the title. We had different incarnations of, it, but we we go out and do a lot of concerts. And, really, and oh. and Paul was part of it. You know, we we, we did uh, Michael Boshin. I don't know if you know Michael. No, great great guitarist. Uh, nylon string was really. No. Just, and we had a group called Wood. Oh, okay. We, we made a small. We made a CD. It it never. Check Again, it's something that we started hitting. It was a beautiful group. Uh, mm. That was a combination of written and and uh, so it was. I played mostly clarinet and some hand drum, and on the recording, I play a little bit of pad on one yeah. tune or something, or, yeah. or you know, a couple. Beautiful. And uh, but so, uh, and Michael did a record uh, for Gunther's uh, label. Uh, years ago, that was really it was mostly an improvisational record. That's beautiful, you know. Hmm. Kenny's on that, and Joe and Paul, and uh, Dave Samuels. Oh wow, well, yeah, Dave and Paul played together. And, and uh, Larry Porter, a great pianist, lived in Germany and Afghanistan for a while. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, yeah, but but so we had this other group. We do a lot of concerts. Uh, and Paul would play, and he got it because Joe and I were playing soprano in this group a lot. I played clarinet and soprano most, and he said, "Man, soprano!" And that got him into soprano. Really? So I didn't know yeah, that. I, I believe so. I wow, believe that's that, beautiful. You know, that's beautiful. Uh, and he and he picked up that thing, and yeah, I think it became part of his like with the not only the English the, 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 the oboe and English oboe, but, yeah, and bass yeah. clarinet. I love man on bass clarinet. He's like. You know, I, w w we did a tour in trio, like me on guitar, a drummer, and with Paul. And, you know, sometimes I step on a distortion pedal and I went like, you know, and then Paul with a, the bass clarinet, it was just like this angry beast. And people don't know him so much right. as a bass clarinet player. And he's he's a monster, man. He's like, oh, beautiful. He's, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah no, very inspiring. It was so, I'm glad his name came up because, you know, I don't have a list of. No, sure. Sometimes, I, I also no, didn't know you played you, with him. So yeah. Sometimes you it go by and go, man. Why didn't we talk about? And I, I apologize ahead of time for people that have been lucky enough to make music with great music with that yeah. I didn't mention, like Gary Versace. Um, you, I don't know if you're familiar with cloning Americana. What? Cloning? No. Cloning Americana? No. Well, I haven't done that many records. I've never done one under my own name. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why. <laughs> It's always been this collaborative, but we did it at my house, and I'm really proud of that too. But uh, I have to check it out. Okay, don't know. It's called "For Which It Stands." It's uh, Jeff Hirschfield, uh, oh, Scott wow. Lee, uh, Gary Versace, and Gary. myself. 
Oh, wow. I have to check it out. Is, is it like on these streaming platforms it's, or everywhere? It's on um, Sunny Side Records. Okay. Well, I'll check it out. Okay, cool. Then it's online. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's, it's a nice color. Scott and I, I think most do most of the uh, writing, I oh, believe, to C&I. And, and, uh, but it's really organic and it's, it's a pretty good mixture of what I was trying to talk about written and, and it's improvised. got a lot of open. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's getting getting close. Not that it's one specific way to do it, but no, that no. was another a, another thing. I'm really proud of how we how we put it together in a day or something. You know? Yeah, and, beautiful. And, yeah, try to try to check that out. Oh, definitely, please. Yeah, I mean, I, I will. But, Thanks for letting me know. For for the looseness of some of it and the and the simplicity of some other things. Oh, oh, uh, Gary has a tune on there too. Yeah. Ah, okay. Beautiful yes. tune, really. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah Gary's yeah. also one of those players. He's man. he's. A, yeah, he's another guy, you know. Yeah. He's another guy, you know. Yeah. Just that's, that's a, also still underrated in my eyes, you know, like such a composer and also band leader and everything, but you know. Well, he could he could just, you know, it's like I mentioned Mitch Foreman who we have Yeah, uh, also, I, yeah. Yeah. But he was a guy young, you know, I knew him. He was a little younger than I and he, you know, you get all of a sudden the work of this guy and he could another guy that could take the composition and see it. Yeah. And take it, you know, take it harmonic, see what you wanted and then take it, you know, yeah, yeah. get the essence of what you meant with the harmonies or with the feeling and then take it. And so to be another beautiful musician who I, yeah. who I miss seeing, you know. Um, but uh, yeah. I, I just, speaking of piano players, uh, uh, not to take too much of your time, really, just the last one. But like, no, this is, no, I'm, I'm cool. I'm, that's, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, just, just like your connection with Lyle, Mace. I, I, oh, I, oh. How, how did that start? I mean, it's, I know probably through your interest in Brazilian music, I guess, but like, how, how did your, how did your hookup with Lyle actually happen? Or We met, we met, my wife's a, a beautiful writer and, and musician, really beautiful, you know, and, and so we had, we had, we did, she also went to Berkeley, but after I did, we met in New York. Hmm. But um, uh, she knew uh, Steve Cantor, who who was a, he went to Berkeley, played guitar, and mm -hmm. uh, he helped he helped produce Lyle's record or records. I don't know how many, but, and he also helped Pat. He was a producer in a lot of Pat's records, oh. or or, or exe uh, not executive uh, co producer. He helped, yeah, yeah, he some, yeah, integral in part. And he was. He was there for the whole thing, so we, I think we actually met there for the first time at a dinner, you know. And uh, well, come to find that, what I always thought he was a he he liked to. Well, I don't know if you went on uh, Joe Vella, you know his name. He's a video. No, no video. Uh, uh, what, how would your video photographer or yeah. <laughs> video yeah, 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 yeah. But he called me recently and said he had when he was very in touch with Lyle through the years he became and, and Pat and he ended up doing he, he had started Lyle's website. He said, you know what, after after Lyle, which is another shock, Lyle, I was on a train. I was like, no, 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 something's wrong here, you know, uh, and we weren't really touch that much you know people would say hey Lyle says hi you know but, but uh, I mean I got the news of that so he said you know what I'm gonna finish the website so he called me and we did a whole there's a whole website uh, his his website check it out, well. and it's very interesting it's very interesting and uh, but he was Lyle was a guy that liked it was also a part of it who the people thing you know from what I I mean I felt that but that was the connection, and we I talk about it in that on the website, you know. I have to check how, it out. How we we ended up uh, originally doing a quintet gig at at all places, strange enough, but it was at uh, the the Willow. Mm -hmm. don't you don't know the Willow being no. in Boston? No. Well, it's where it's where George and Garzon and Garzon Bobby and all Bloody, these guys. with oh, okay. uh, the Fringe. Okay. Shout out to the French. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but, definitely. Uh, yeah. So, but they played at the Willow. Uh, oh, okay. Maybe I guess you're after that. Okay. Yeah. The funkiest. It was the funk. Sorry, the Willow. I'm gonna. But it was the funkiest place. There was two halves. One was like the men's bar, and the other one was this uh, where we played. And okay. it was. <laughs> 
and so we did a quintet gig, which which they had recently sent me. Uh, With Mark Johnson. And John. and, well, these guys, no. Mark Johnson, uh, Pasqua, who was who sounded beautiful. Oh, man. He, he yeah. passed. He passed away. He used to play with different people. Very yeah, such a player. Yeah. And Lyle brought his piano, brought all his, he had his roadie, he brought his Heimberg Stein in this funky club, you know, for, I yeah. he either played, I think two nights, maybe two, two nights, I believe. And it was broadcast. And uh, so we did that in the music. Was, it was almost like his version of a jazz gig, like maybe Herbie would present. You know? mm. So we did that. It was beautiful. And then he invited me up to, at his house because he was going to do this he was thinking about this other record who was came to, to become his first i guess solo record yeah, as we yeah. call it a self-titled record yeah uh, which is really again now here's it didn't have a lot of improvisation but there were moments and hopefully and those that's what i mentioned earlier on slink that's oh, on oh. slink <laughs> jesus I don't, you know it wasn't it wasn't a uh it's just like a, technical but i tried to play the mood of it i, I think they captured yeah. maybe the mood of that yeah. feeling because that that i mean that's a wonderful piece it's a beautiful composition yeah so yeah. we went up again this is um uh, uh i mentioned in the website i might have mentioned this but the story so we went up to his house for like one or two days i remember one night we just we improvised mm, wow. again here's like something that i wish was captured and he yeah. too he, he he said wow that was to improvise with all his gear wow. and then and and he loved it bill was there and i think mark and i wow. don't think nana was there that night i don't think i Man. try to recall you know but so that was the culmination of that and then we did the record you know yeah. and, and and on a lot of levels it was it was deep because you know you had a touch of this really well organized well funded record not not to i don't mean your pay necessarily but just to really do it like, like with the care that a rock and roll, you know, one. I know what you mean. Yeah. Not not anywhere near a rock and roll record or something that would have the funding, but just the, you know, to take take really time. There was no yeah. and at the best studio and take like days to do it. So it was really on that level and musically, you know, to yeah. to have this music again, that culmination of written and a little bit of and. and improvisation and and how you played the line how we i yeah. played really happy to how bill and i played some of the lines and it's it's so beautiful just, yeah you know yeah. so that that was that was beautiful to be part of and honored and feel lucky to have been part of that you know experience did you guys do gigs also like afterwards like to present the album or no or no we never we did a gig before before yeah okay we did it was a at, at long island's coming up a lot here but it was a it was a video studio oh. who I, I i did two things after that i i uh, uh the pianist from uh actually paul who's the from the west coast you would know um, uh, art, that paul played art art, art, landy. art landy yeah incredible. Art yeah. Landy. They had, i went to this he did a thing after we did lyle's and they had like seven cameras wow. was in the basement and it was really it was unbelievable and they, I think I played a tune or two with them. Paul said, come on up and play. Beautiful. And that was, I remember that just, but, um, Lyle did it. And, and that, the change was Adam Nussbaum was playing. Oh, wow. At Adam, the time. Yeah. And I thought they did a great job, but they ended up using Alex, who I, I yeah. you know, which really, he, he had this percussion. Yeah, well, maybe music. more fitted with this. He song. came to, but, but Adam played beautiful, you know, yeah. too. So that's going around on online. Occasionally, I'd see something that that was the precursor to this record. Yeah. But we never did, you know. Mm, that's a shame. Yeah. And Lyle, listen to him. He was, you know, it's like, he, you know, where uh, so many people use the word genius because it was more than the music. It was they could see into his mind how he functioned. Yeah. So because you can go, people go, well, I, I think this piano player had. I love this guy. And it wasn't about, I think, why they called him genius. It's just how his mind worked yeah. and the music and how he created the music. You know, with, he was like with a team Pat. player. Also. Yeah, with, with Pat's thing, yeah. how he created. It's a guy, a young guy, really great uh, pianist from, uh, went to NYU. I played a little session with him. He was leaving. But he did some kind of thing where he, he, he analyzed Pat 
Pat's role in, in Pat's, mostly Pat's music or the mm. presentation of Pat's band and Lyle's contribution to it and, and the difference. It was, Pat would always take this wide thing and take yeah. it to another place, you know, uh, Lyle. Lyle, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, So the combination worked really good, you know. Yeah, they're fun. Between those two guys, you know. Also a composer, that, you know, like Street Dreams and the Fictionary, those two records. Oh, yeah, Man, yeah. It's like, so, so beautiful, yeah, such a plan. You know, so I guess his niece is, is I have never met her, but I heard one thing that really sounded beautiful. Uh, oh, really? It's, yeah, she's a vocalist and a, rain, a, a composer, I think. Oh, wow, that's good. Aubrey, maybe, Aubrey Johnson. Or something. I, I, hmm. But very, uh, yeah, really talented. So they had, a, it's like, it seems like he might have collaborated later in his life with her and gave her this inspiration. That's so good. Like, I'm keep hoping that that's, yeah. yeah, keep that spirit going, you know. Yeah, beautiful. And then you hear stories from him from the past. That, you know, well, I was just, you know, again, lucky to, to have those, yeah, share those nice. collaborations with people, you know, yeah. wow. What, what, you know, without that, yeah, my life would have, your life would have been cool, but it, it's a, it adds a lot to those experiences, you know, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. sure you had some other questions too, you know. Oh uh, uh, wow, well, we kind of covered like we 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 we, kind of, we flew or you know all these directions. Well, like, anything else that you anything else that you had that was important to your uh, let's that see. you wanted to talk about. I think we covered basically all, all of, all of what, what, well, there's probably more to talk about, but like all of these things, you know, that kind of, I wanted to cover, like, uh, especially with Bill and, you know, Lyle and with Paul, for me, that's your three collaborations that are like, man, you know. Yeah. So, you know, incredible, so. and I must mention that, that my, uh, uh, I've been part of the Vanguard Orchestra for all these years. Oh I, yeah, shit, I, yeah, I just, exactly. I just want to. I know we don't have to go in depth, but I mean that's been a. That was like during you know, the '80s, mostly, right? Or no? Well, it's still going. I mean, it's, it's, it's still, still happening. Going. Oh wow! Well, now I mean, it has some. Now, not now, yeah, but like pre-COVID. Oh yeah, cool. yeah, really? yeah. You know, and I'm not really a. I'm, you know, I love getting together with. As I say, we had these groups with just pure improvisation. Yeah, I love. But the strength of that and the experience of that has, has been, really? and, and the family of that life, you know, you get these different families. And, yeah. And, and that's been a part of it too, you know, so, uh, and you wonder what, you know, I've been doing this a while, uh, you know, we put, you play this, the, the you know, mostly bad things and Bob Brookmeyer's and McNeely, but yeah. uh, it's just all beautiful. And, but you start, you get in there and you walk in on a Monday, and the rhythm section starts to play and it's, it's it's just so strong and maybe you'll play a new piece of music or one of thad's things that's still like you know the hair goes it rises on your body you know so yeah. i just wanted to mention that as a as a part of my family you know definitely yeah i mean and it's different but i love i love the small i love the little things just pure improvisation too you know and again trying to collab trying to put it all together into would be nice to hear like uh, in a in a context just like of this pure improvised music also like on records uh, are, are there any records you did like that were like purely improvised yeah. like well we did a lot on this wood we made a record that i don't know it's ah, really wood. Not okay. available cool. but you okay. know mark feldman played on it really so, oh wow wood. yeah mark feldman played we recorded some of my house a couple things by the guitar player written he wrote a for his grandmother, a tune that's like a classical kind of piece. And hmm. You should, yeah, try to get there or let me I will know. Definitely. Get it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try but to. But it never it. got. It was a thing that we we would, we started doing gigs and it looked like it was going to go, and then you know it didn't. Yeah, for whatever yeah, reason, sure. things you put Stay, a certain amount yeah. of funding into it, but you didn't put it. You know, it's another thing. You, you know, it's this business. I hardly ever. I think you know business. I put more into other stuff than I did in my music, but. I, you know, sometimes you have to invest, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I mean, not to get into that quick, but, but, but yeah, you got to believe in it. You got to believe yeah. in it. You know. Well, well, what I noticed, like, it's like, uh, at least with me, I, I, I'm all about the process, you know, like that writing music, I love that, then recording and recursing and playing gigs. And then the record comes out. And this is, I think, where at least me, I'm speaking for me, or many of my, my friends lack, uh, the skills where 
Oh, if you're yeah. smart, you invest into that, you know, which is like post, you know, promotion. And when I have the album, I'm like, yeah, okay, let's move on, write new music. And it's wrong because you should put like so much uh, yeah. effort there, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Well, even the record you mentioned, our record Under One Sun, you know, yeah. I, that was why I had patience because I, I, I said, oh man, are we gonna, is this thing going to be able to get out there? And I don't think it really got enough play. We ended up doing the Ground Up Festival and a couple things. And we did some really beautiful gigs in Toronto. And, mm. But I don't feel like it really got out there. And that's cool. Most things don't, you know. Yeah, so much music. And, uh, but, but, you know, that's, you almost have to get those wheels turning before, you know. I remember Matt Garrison, the beautiful, you know, the electric player, bass player, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, and I remember something vaguely. Uh, he, he played my music a couple of times. And he's a beautiful player, beautiful yeah. guy. And uh, I remember he was doing a record. And he already started the thing like half a year, I think, I, months before, you know, getting getting orders for the record, before it was even out. Yeah. I always recall that, you know. And, 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 and I'm bad at that, too, because, you know. What are you gonna say? This is the baddest stuff out there. This is you gotta have this, you know. I, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> First of all, it's not. And but so, yeah, yeah. But you got to get it out there. Yeah, right? sure, it's, sure. It's, and there's a lot out there. It there's is a lot yeah. of good great stuff. Things. I don't know how much you know how much great innovative, you know, great and innovative. Yeah, yeah, but you know, there is. Yeah. Everybody seems they want to do innovative, and then you can get caught up in that. <laughs> that can hold you back yeah it's yeah. again tied into what we were saying just play a beautiful melody exactly and, you know, yeah maybe maybe you know, <laughs> so no it's true yeah that's true i beautiful. figured you know just i talk a little about the process and i, I don't know you know everybody's yeah. thing is a little different and sure. i'm just so glad to be part of it you know and to talk to you today thank you yeah thanks so much billy like the Thanks for sharing the time and the thoughts and everything and the music, I mean, throughout this 50 years. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And so, honored to be here with you and, and talk. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thanks to the crowd. <laughs>